I mean, people have been trying, Ted Butler in particular, they've right. been trying to get the Securities and Exchange Commission to look into all this for years yeah. and years and years, this, the silver manipulation. Right. Finally, uh, you know, the COMEX sort of dismissed this uh, uh, McGuire, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but the Department of Justice goes, he's got something there. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, Ted, as you said, has kind of led the charge. I mean, mm -hmm. I've written a few letters and commented on it from time to time, but Ted's definitely the leader there as far as I'm concerned. And the and CFTC that's, uh, is... butlerresearch.com. Yeah, butlerresearch.com. Butler Research. And what's happened is they've given these kind of blanket statements over the years that really say nothing. Yeah. And that's been the CFTC's position. Well, this last time it's gone to a criminal investigation and no real formal statement was made. And then there was a CFTC hearing. And they really, I think, did a fair job of getting both sides. They didn't get Andrew McGuire at the hearing, but it was brought up during the testimony. So what happened was now that it's in the public record, you can't mm -hmm. really ignore it. Uh, what would happen to the price of silver if they, dis they discover that uh, it has been manipulated and they put in some uh, regulations to prevent any manipulation in the future uh, and all of this uh, naked shorting has to be covered. Well, <laughs> I don't want to stick my neck out too far because I have thought it over and I, I want to be conservative here. I mean, I, what should happen is the price should skyrocket. What would happen, I'm not certain because there's so many offshore accounts and just because you can prove that JP Morgan is massively short versus the CFTC in the public domain. I mean, we can prove that. We don't know what relationships they have with, say, a Swiss bank or a Cayman Islands bank or something like that. So for thought purposes, they mm -hmm. could actually be net long, knowing this market's going to take off sooner or later. Yeah. We don't know what the net-net position is, in other words. So I'm a little remiss to say it's going to be exactly like this because there's, it's so complicated and there's so many derivatives upon derivatives. The yeah. bottom line is simple. There's going to be a day when, and I think we're getting very close already, where the physical market will take control finally yeah. in silver and gold. And that's the day to watch out for. And that, at that point, it really doesn't matter too much what's going on in the derivatives market because someone's going to try to you know, send somebody a bunch of paper, gold, and silver, and it's, like it's not going through you know, the, yeah. the process that's required. It's not going to put an automobile together or a high-rise building together that needs the tinted glass with silver in it or a rear window well, defogger or a cell phone it, or anything more else. More importantly, it's not going to be deliverable to yeah. a, uh, an investor that insists on physical silver. Better and and Because uh, <clears throat> all of the uh, industrial applications for silver, that is um, great that, that silver gets used up. And as far as an investment standpoint, where we stand, where we are right at this moment in history, that's the big story of why silver is in such short supply. And uh, but <clears throat> the um, when it comes to where the price is going eventually, uh, I don't think that that's going to make more than a couple percent difference compared to the uh, the price rises that are going to be caused by what you called. Um, a flock of birds suddenly changing yeah. direction, yeah. that the investors are sort of all going one direction and there's going to come a day where they all try and rush into physical gold and silver. Right. And that's what the, where the, and you have always said. Yeah, just to be clear, yeah, I mean, this yeah, might be a video of someone's, this. yeah, that investment demands is going to take it higher, far yeah, higher. Yeah. And it is nice to have the industrial demand. The point is simple. Physical silver is a whole different entity than paper silver and there's just way too much paper silver and gold and the day of reckoning is coming and hopefully it's going to be fairly soon. That's the monetary ratio, or what I call the classic ratio. Mm -hmm. The natural ratio as it comes out of the earth is about 12 to 1 in the 12th century to about the 17th and the 17th century. Now the natural ratio is about...